Welcome to a mini lecture for CS 106. Over the next couple weeks, we'll be dealing with objects and the definitions of the objects. This is similar to recipes and cookies. Recipes are not cookies. Recipes are the definition of how cookies are made. Once they're made, then you have the object, which is a cookie. So recipes are not cookies, and you cannot eat a recipe, but you can eat the cookie. In a similar way, there are classes and objects. Classes are similar to recipes. They're the definition for how objects are made in programming. And the objects then are like the cookies. They have different shapes, they have different um, textures, they may have different flavors uh, and different sizes, but they're still an object that you can touch and eat. The first class we're going to look at, actually the second class, because we've already worked with scanners, and scanners are a class. Um, the next one is random, and random helps us generate random numbers. Lotteries, for example, are a, a good uh, example to look at for creating random numbers. If you proceed over to random.org, www.random.org, you'll see a way to generate random numbers. This is a small program that generates five numbers based on certain rules. The next link which you've already hopefully visited is the Illinois Lottery Rules for the Mega Millions. This, these actually are the same rules that are being generated in the Quick Pick link that you already visited. Based on this, the rules are very simple. Five numbers, unique numbers, are selected randomly. The numbers range from 1 through 56, and then one additional number, 1 through 46, is selected randomly. Now, so now I'm going to show you how to create a program like this using the random class. Random class is used to generate random values in your program. You'll need to import the random class, which I'll show you how to do in a minute but you also use two other primary lines of code. This one, random random new numbers equals new random, all on one line, followed by int, your random value, your variable, whatever you want to call it, equals random, va random numbers dot next int. When this line of code is executed, a random number will be produced and stored in the variable called random value. Random numbers in program may are not really random. We call them pseudo-random numbers. They're based on a very complex mathematical calculation. If you know the calculation and what we call the seed value, you can always recreate the same random number every single time you run the program. For creating a random number in Java, the seed value is the current date and time stamp of your computer. When the, com when the program is run, that date time stamp is captured and that makes the mathematical equation different every time you run your program. Now I'm going to walk you through an example of first I want you to pause the lecture, make sure NetBeans is open, and then create a new project. When you used the scanner class last week, you had to import the package so it could be used. Underneath the package line of your code at the top, add the following line of code. Import space java.util capital R random. Alright, now go down to the main method and add the following lines of code. First add the comment create the generator with a line of code underneath it random with a capital R gen gen equals new capital R random open paren close paren semicolon. Next, underneath that, 
add another comment, produce a random number, and under that add the line of code int x equals gen dot next int open paren close paren semicolon. Now to see the results of the random number generator and see what x is, add a line to print x. After you have this print statement in, now you can run it. Run it several times actually and see the different numbers that appear as part of the random number generator. Now suppose you didn't want to get one of those large random numbers, you wanted to limit it between a number, a single digit number between 0 and 9. To do this, you would add a scaling factor. So I'm going to have you create a new line of code, this time int y equals gen dot next int, and inside the parentheses place the number 10. This will ensure that you only get a random number between 0 and 9. After you've done that, make sure you also add a print statement to print y out somewhere underneath where you're printing x out. Run the code several times to make sure that x is still giving you a random number which might be very large and y which is only giving you a random number between 0 and 9. I have one more example to walk you through for this mini lecture. Suppose you wanted to simulate the role of a die. So you wanted a number between 1 and 6. If we use a scaling factor of 7, we would get a random number between 0 and 6 since Java starts counting at 0 and all of our scaling factor does is limit the upper boundary of um, the random number. So to do this, we need to create an offset, and our offset would be a number 1. If we limit and use our scaling factor of 6, we'll get a random number between 0 and 5. If we add 1 to that result, then we'll get a random number between 1 and 6. The next line of code you'll add is the die simulation, so add a comment with die simulation and underneath that comment add the line of code int z equals gen dot next int open parentheses 6 close parentheses plus 1 and of course we want to see the results of this random number generation so next line of code should print z and then once you're finished adding that code run it several times. Again, you should see that Z is giving you different results and the results should be from 1 to 6. You should not see a 0 um, as a result of this random number generation for Z. If you've had any problems going through this and coding, please check the solution that I'm also posting on Moodle. Hopefully you can see that random is just another class and there's special code behind it that we can use in our programs just like scanner is and lets us get input from the user. I'll also go into more detail about classes and objects and their special relationship. Save any questions you might have for Thursday or if you'd like you could go ahead and email me I will try to answer those um, before Thursday if I receive them in the next day or two. Otherwise, Otherwise, I look forward to, to seeing you on, on Thursday, Thursday and, and discussing, discussing this more with you. you. And that's a wrap. Stop.